Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Mayuko and on this channel we talk about tech stuff. And today we're going to be talking about how to debug. Bugs are still one of the most frustrating things to encounter when I'm coding because there's nothing quite like building something that you think will work only to have it just break in front of your face. But I also think that fixing bugs is one of the most rewarding experiences too, because there's also nothing quite like fixing a nasty bug that you've been working on for hours, only to see it melt away at your fingertips. Computer scientist Edsger Dijkstra once said, if debugging is a process of removing software bugs, then programming must be the process of putting them in. It's pretty snarky if you ask me, Dijkstra. But I agree with the essence of it, that most programs are not without bugs. It's really tough to know every scenario and state that your code will be running when you're writing it, so bugs are a totally natural side effect for when you're writing code. Unfortunately, that doesn't make it any less frustrating to deal with those bugs, especially if they're show-stopping bugs that completely break what you're making. But there are definitely skills and methods in debugging that help make the process go a little smoother. As I mentioned in my computer science degree video, I was lucky enough to take a class about how to debug as part of the course curriculum. And so today I'm gonna share with you five of my tips on how to debug easily. A lot of these tips come from the textbook that we use for that class, which is this one. Debugging the nine indispensable rules for finding even the most elusive software and hardware problems by David J. Aggins. I've synthesized my takeaways from that book along with my own experiences of debugging for the last 10 years. So I hope you enjoy and let's get started. Tip number one is to reproduce the behavior consistently. Reliably reproducing bugs is half the battle. A bug has a much better chance of being identified and fixed if you can reproduce it the same way every time. So when you identify a bug, don't even think about the code that might be having the issue. Just think of the code as a black box and figure out what inputs cause the bug to appear. Once you're able to reproduce it, one thing that I like to do is to shorten the steps it takes to reproduce it, AKA what's like the simplest thing that I could do to make the bug appear. This helps limit the variables when you're trying to fix the bug. So simplify, simplify, and simplify. And once you're able to reproduce it, write down the steps on how you do that, especially if there are a lot of them. I mean, if you have terrible memory like me, you'll be very glad that you did in case that you forget how to make it appear. Step two is to divide and conquer. So given that you're able to reproduce the bug consistently, we now have to figure out which part of the code causes the error. This is where you're gonna to try to narrow into one part of the code. I think that one to five lines is about the level of accuracy that we're trying to go for. So where do you start? Well, depending on the code base and your level of fluency with it, you might know right away. But in case you don't, here are the ways that I like to go through the code. The first is to find any strings that you can search on. For instance, there's a string literal in the UI, or maybe the error message is unique. I like to do search in that entire code base with that term just to get a sense of what neighborhood to look in. And if you're working on a code base with other people, this is a really great time to ask them where to look. Trust me, doing this will save a lot of time. And lastly, set breakpoints and print statements. This is especially helpful if you've already narrowed it down to a general area of the code base. Set breakpoints and place print statements in different parts of that area to get a snapshot of values and states that could give you a better idea of where the bug could be. The next tip is to survey the landscape. After you've been able to narrow into a general area of the code base, then I really recommend doing this. This part doesn't need to take long, but getting a thorough understanding of what the code is doing allows you to make a well-informed change so that you're not causing more bugs as you go about fixing it. So make sure to read the code carefully. Figure out answers to questions like, why was it written like this? When does the code get run? Who wrote this code? And what was it written for in the first place? Oh, and if there was an error message, then read that very carefully too. And question your assumptions. Maybe you're making some assumptions about the code that aren't necessarily true. Another thing that I like to do is to pin the timeline by looking at various paper trails. Like what changes since the last time it worked or look at your version control history. At this point, you're basically acting as a detective for what went wrong. And if Jake Peralta taught me anything about being a detective, it's about doing a little bit of role play. And when you're doing some debugging work, the role that you're trying to play is to think like a computer. What's the computer working with? 
What values is it holding? And what instructions did you give it? And one of the foundational skills that allow you to do this is to think logically. And our sponsor for today's video, Brilliant, has courses to help you hone those skills. They're a website that have a bunch of courses on the sciences, including one about logic. All their courses are interactive and easy to understand and teach you how to think. Logic is such a foundational skill for all things computer science and software engineering, so make sure to check out that course. So go to brilliant.org slash hellomayuko and sign up for free. And the first 200 people to go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thank you so much Brilliant for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. Okay, now a tip for when you're fixing the bug, make changes one step at a time. And this is because bugs are delicate things. Changing too many things at a time is not gonna help you pinpoint what the issue really was. So literally just like change one thing and then run the program if you need to and see how the bugs changed or if it's fixed. And one thing that's really helped me in doing this is to create a code sandbox if possible. And what I mean by that is to see if I can replicate the same bug by pulling that part of the code into something simpler. So maybe that's a standalone program or an app or a class or whatever makes sense for your environment that basically gets rid of all of the other variables. This helps me to concentrate on that part of the code only and makes it also easier to only change one thing at a time by getting rid of all of the other distractions. And if all else fails, my last tip for debugging is to get a fresh perspective. Because sometimes you just spend so much time engrossed in a bug that you don't know what's up or down anymore. It's actually really important to recognize when you're in this state. In fact, I usually time box all of my bugs to one day, as in I will spend one whole day looking at a bug and if I can't fix it, then I have to change tactics. So ask a friend or colleague to debug with you. They have a fresh set of eyes, so they'll help to introduce you to new perspectives or new methods of problem solving that maybe you hadn't considered before. And I know it's tough, but don't be afraid to ask for help here. Teams are stronger when everyone can work to fix problems together. Whatever lesson that you take away from this bug can be shared with somebody else. And while it might take some more time to fix the bug, at the end of the day, you are unblocked and you can move on with your life. And in case you're working alone, sometimes it can just help to think out loud to something so that you can think more clearly about what's going on. Anyway, those are my five steps for how to debug easily. Like I mentioned, I learned a lot of these skills in that class I took in college. The textbook that we used for that class was super useful and served as a blueprint for this video. So I'll leave a link to this book in the description box down below. So thanks so much for watching my video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos about tech, career, and lifestyle. Leave a comment down below for any debugging tricks you have of your own, and I will see you next time. Bye.